Welcome to the Rediscover You in Midlife Pod Summit, hosted by The Roller Coaster. My name is Lucy Q. Five years ago, the emotional turmoil of midlife turned my life into a shitstorm. To make things worse, I had no idea that my chaotic emotions were due to the roller coaster of midlife. I thought I was crazy and I felt completely alone. I've come to realize that midlife is more than a list of symptoms that we have to injure or cure. Midlife is the beginning of our next chapters. This is our time to be heard, to live our best lives, and to fix those pesky hormones. Join me as I chat with experts and industry leaders about nutrition, bone health, hormones, mindset, healing, journaling, living life to the fullest, and yes, even sex. I'm inviting you to throw your head back, arms in the air, and come along with me for the ride. I was finally able to start my journaling practice back in 2018, but that was only after several failed attempts. Before I was really able to connect with journaling, I had purchased countless blank journals with high hopes of pouring myself onto their pages. Instead of spilling my words of wisdom and insight, I'd find myself sitting there just staring at blank pages, painfully trying to find something to write. That is why I created Your Journaling Journey, a quick start guide to begin your journaling practice today. Your Journaling Journey is a guided journal with daily prompts, gratitude, and affirmations. You can get your copy of Your Journaling Journey today on Amazon or check out the show notes for links. Welcome back to the Rediscover You in Midlife Pod Summit. I'm your host, Lucy Q, and joining me is Lucy Lou. Lucy is a master life coach helping women live epic lives. She's an unshakable optimist, wife, mom, entrepreneur, workshop facilitator, motivational speaker, best-selling author, and podcast host of The Lucy Lou Show. Welcome, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hello, everyone. We were having a little bit of a giggle about our names just before we hit record because they kind of sounds like a nursery rhyme when you put them together. Um, Now, Lucy, you have a very interesting story because you went from being stressed out, unhappy, unhealthy, but you also transformed your life. Can you maybe share a little bit about the catalyst for why you made this massive change? Oh my goodness, how how much time do we have, right? (laughs) Because I've made so many bald moves in my life and made so many transitions and transformations. It's, It's hard to pick one story. And, you know, when I first started coaching, when I first started sharing my stories, I even had trouble telling my story because I didn't think I have any story. And as I dig in, and started to think about all the lessons I picked up along the way. I was even amazed at how much how many stories I had. And for one, uh, as you mentioned, with my name, that was a big lesson in itself. Because after I became a life coach, I'm helping other women shatter their lifetime limiting beliefs. So it was only natural for me that I wanted to talk the talk and walk the walk. So I was constantly journaling and reflecting on what type of limiting beliefs that I should shatter for myself. So I made a whole list and I shattered each of them. And it's for fun because we realize our goals and dreams while we're having fun. So one of those being my name being the same as a celebrity because we all love Angelina Jolie or Julia Roberts, but unfortunately, there's just not another one out there, right? There's already someone so famous by that name that it's just really hard to surpass that mark, right? That benchmark. So that was my biggest hindrance for many, many years in my life. I was really stuck in this low point that I'm nobody, I just kind of went through life feeling like I'm average Jane, 
you know, feeling like your average Joe, average Jane, because life really was just going day by day. And I, since I'm going to be nobody, I, I just worked and I hustled. And of course, hustling works, but it only gets you so far, right? So it got me to, I had success in my early life, but it really got me to a point of burnout. And that's why now I'm really passionate about speaking to confidently level up your life, but yet not burning out, having fun along the way. And if you're listening or watching, it, it, this story could be different for you. Maybe you have a, a name that's too hard to spell, too hard to pronounce, too long, too short, too common, too, you know, whatever it is that you dislike about your name or, you know, even parts of you, you or your body part, your, you know, your ethnicity, where you come from, your background, your culture. There's always thoughts that we have about us. Whereas these are just beliefs that we hold on to be so true that we think they're actually the truth. And that's what I did. I shattered my own limiting belief by launching my own podcast. And that's just calling it the Lucy Lou show. I mean, if I just even help better the life of one listener, I'm making a better contribution to the world. And that matters to me that I'm making a contribution to the world. So when we turn that limiting belief to being about from about you to whoever is benefiting, you're providing value, that makes a world of difference. And your biggest hindrance today will become your biggest asset tomorrow. So today, my name is Lucy Liu. I own it, I embrace it, and it's actually my maiden name. So every time I need to look for that confidence again, I refer back to that confident version of me, of owning my name, and it's been a blessing. And I think whether... You know, and this isn't just for women. This isn't just for midlife men, uh, women. But I think this this happens to just about everybody, is that we all find those stories that we keep telling ourselves, and that's what is feeding into our limiting beliefs. And most of the time, these limiting beliefs are stories that we started telling ourselves because of something that we happened as a little kid. Yet it ends up ruling and dictating most of our lives. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm from Los Angeles. So being really close to Hollywood, I actually uh, signed up with a casting agency for commercials. And I went to numerous, numerous auditions. And every time I went to an audition, the casting director would run out and be like, super disappointed that I wasn't the Lucy Lou. Oh, shoot. Like, I grew up that way, and guess what? I never casted in a single role, but I've been to tons of auditions, and my confidence was like crashed, stepped, stomped upon on the floor like for numerous times. But you know what? Now that I look back, it was those times that I picked myself back up that was my exercise to build my confidence muscle and confidence is definitely a muscle that you can build you decide it's decision you can decide to be confident you can decide to live a certain way you can decide how you want to spend your days each every day how you want to feel what you want to be doing who you want to be with it's all up to you and I think there's a lot of misconception around what confidence is because a lot of the time we're looking at somebody from the outside and assuming that they have it all put together and they're saying the right things and they're doing the right things and they look the right way, that inside that they're holding that confidence. But a lot of the time it goes back to fake it until you make it, that you're you're having to dig down and take that leap of faith on whatever it is that you're trying to do and forge ahead because it's it's in the 
it's it, that's what I think stumbles a lot of people is that they don't have the confidence and therefore they don't try, but really you have to try and the confidence comes later. Yeah. And I really like to add to that. This is something I talk about often is the truth that I want to debunk. It's a myth that I want to debunk that you have to be loud in order to be confident. I, I'm not sure which I am now either an extroverted introvert or an introverted extrovert, but I definitely enjoy my quiet times. And I, I can be totally alone. I can be totally alone and still be confident. So I think that's something that a lot of people confuse confidence with is being loud. You don't have to be loud. You don't have to be showing up on camera every day in order to say that you're confident, right? If you're a business owner, where are your clients coming from? Where are you getting your sales? Repeat what works for you. And I always say that every guru is right. Every marketer is right, but they, they could just not be a good fit for you right so it's your decision how you want to show up for your business and life and it's your decision and you touched on something really important there and i think it's easy to fall into the trap of having that cookie cutter that there's one way to do it there's one way to be when really you have to find your own way sure there's certain benchmarks or beacons that we can follow while we're trying to find our, our inner confidence. But it really comes down to being willing to learn it for yourself and find out what works for you. Absolutely. I cannot agree more because our life is different. That's why we're all unique in our own ways and life is beautiful. You're listening, you're watching, you're amazing. I didn't understand that. <laughs> I don't know how my phone picked up that. Okay, Google just thought I was. See, look, to even her, Siri but... gets confused with these topics. Yeah, <laughs> when my phone is on silent. Okay, um, that was interesting. Sorry, um, but how you decide to live your life is by choice, and I always get that. How do you stay confident, Lucy? It's a decision. I decided to be an unshakable optimist. It's a decision. It's a way of living. It's a way I decide to live life. And you get to decide how you want to live life, right? Being confident is not about walking into the room knowing that you're the best of what you do, knowing that you have everything, knowing that you are you know, the most wealthy, healthy, or whatever you fill in the blank. But it's having that knowing that you don't need to compare yourself to anyone else in the room. And then when you have that, you walk in the room, there's a completely different energy. You just have that halo above you, right? It's just a complete different energy. And it's by choice. It's your choice. And you've got it already. Your well of wisdom is already inside of you. It's just sometimes, you know, those bushes get hidden. The well is hidden, but it's already there. And your mindset, whatever's blocking you from your fullest potential, that mindset can shift from moment to moment. It can be shift in the next second if you decided to even if it's something that you hold on to for years and I have another example for that is my English so I wasn't born in America I was born in China and I immigrated to America when I was in elementary school but I held on to this belief that because I wasn't born in America my English isn't good enough and even though I had straight A's in class and even though I live you know I graduated from a top university and I lived life all these years 
I still held on to that belief. And you know what? By launching my own podcast, I also wanted to break that limiting belief so that I can show others, even though you hold on to this belief for a long time, whatever it may be that you're thinking that you're not good enough, you're not ready yet, you know, whatever that belief for you may be, I just want you to know that it can be broken and that mindset can be shifted and it can happen really fast if you let it be, if you decide to let it be that way. And I think part of it comes with being, I want to say being comfortable in your own skin and being okay with who you are in that moment. You mentioned walking to a room. I fully accept at times where regardless of what my exterior is showing inside, I can feel like a hot mess because anything could be happening before you walk in that room. But I think the confidence and exercising confidence comes from knowing that regardless of what you're walking into, you got this, you know who you are and you know that no matter what challenge comes up, you can face it because I mean, let's face it, you've overcome in some way, every challenge that's, that's come to you this far. So why wouldn't you then just believe in yourself that it doesn't make a difference what comes up next, that you can handle it, that you can conquer it, that you can move past it. Totally. Life is going to throw us curveballs. It, it's pretty fair. We all get curveballs, <laughs> but how, how, what do we do with these balls, right? What do you do? Um, pretend these are rocks being thrown at you and we all get these rocks. But do you see these rocks as boulders getting in your way? Or do you see these rocks as pebbles that are paving your exact path to your success and happiness? That is another decision and that is your decision. So that perception, how you want to see things is so crucial. How you react is going to determine your entire experience throughout catching that curveball, catching that rock, right? Boulder or pebble, you get to decide. And I can certainly speak to that because for most of my life, every pebble that was thrown at me Um, I took as the world was against me, that I was a victim. And I didn't realize how far that each of those pebbles weighed down. And it wasn't until I was in my mid 40s where everything that I had never dealt with came crashing down on me. And it was a very painful experience, but it was also the best thing that could have happened to me because I was over time and over, you know, all of my own inner work, I was able to start taking those pebbles. And like you said, start paving my way forward instead of letting them just weigh me down and burying me. It's, it's a process and it takes, it takes courage to start to take that belief in yourself, regardless of what anyone around you says, what the world is saying, It takes a massive amount of courage to realize that you're just as valuable as anybody else and you have just as many rights as anybody else to live your life how you choose. And when you start letting those pebbles be your path instead of be your weight, that's when the transformation begins. Beautifully said. And I think that's why personal development is so important. If I hadn't gone through decades of decades of personal development once you hit 40 you're going to be like omg right? oh yeah Life is like over <laughs> but because i went through decades of personal development i'm like hey baby 40 i'm reborn right that attitude and that that energy of living each life remember each day adds up to your life so how you want to live each day is going to determine how the rest of your life is going to be. So go into it with enthusiasm, with excitement. Your life gets more exciting, right? And I can remember when I turned 40, I didn't care. It didn't bother me either way. It wasn't, you know, I didn't feel age. I didn't feel regret or anything like that. It was, you know, more like just another birthday. Yeah, whatever. But now that I'm, I'm going to be turning 50 in May, I'm really excited. 
because because of everything that I've learned in the last five years, but also everything that I can see is laying in front of me and what I can achieve and, you know, whatever I want to do is there for me just to make that choice and, and just do it and not care. And part of my journey over the five years is remembering that it's the journey that you're enjoying. And I think so often we get caught up in reaching a certain milestone. And that's when we attach the, oh, when I get there, then I'll be happier. When I get there, then this will happen. Instead of living life for every, every, as you said, every day is that experience. Every day is, you know, a new page in the book that we're writing that is the story of our life. And that's the fuel that drives you forward and, and opens up, you know, sure, the next page is blank, but it's, we get to write what's going to be on that page. And it's, do you want to make it fun or do you want to still sit down in the dumps? Yeah, it's so true. Like we're always looking at the next mountaintop, but remember to always enjoy the journey, even at the wrong turns, right? <laughs> even, hey, even when oopsie <laughs> daisy, right. We're, we took a wrong turn, but you got to see some different flowers on the way, right? But, was it, the but that's the thing. Was it a wrong turn? Yeah, you just never know. It's 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 so easy to look back with judgment and say that was a mistake, that was a mistake. But that mistake taught you something and that mistake or that choice or that decision is why you're here right now. And for good, bad or otherwise, it all builds into that inner wisdom. Absolutely. And that even that dead end could be the most beautiful resting stop on your way. Yeah, sometimes you have to do something and realize, no, you don't want to do it. You don't like it. It's not for you. Or, yeah, no, let's let's try something else. At least you know that you went down that path instead of sitting there going, I wonder what would have happened if. Well, now you know. And now you know, okay, that's not going to work or that's not what I want. Now I can move on to, oh, what do I want? Absolutely. Never want to live a life of what ifs. Yeah, Definitely. Now, you mentioned that you did a lot of inner work, you did a lot of coaching and that and that's now what you do. And you help women, you find you help women uh, find clarity, find their confidence and find more joy in their life. For anybody listening, how can they start to find their own clarity and what they're looking for out of their life experience? Oh, I love this question because clarity comes with action. So many times we want clarity, but we're just sitting there and thinking about what clarity looks like. And as a woman, or it could be men, well, at least I say I'm an ex overthinker. I'm definitely an ex nobody. I'm an ex overachiever. Okay, so whatever tip here, whatever you want to get rid of yourself in your life, that's verbal boundary right there. Add an X in front of that, right? So I am definitely an X over thinker. And I've talked to women who says, oh, Lucy, you know what? I actually spent two hours yesterday thinking about how I'm overthinking things. <laughs> that is just our natural human tendency. We're wasting time. You're stuck at the same spot. And then the more you think about it, you're going to be like, oh, I'm actually wasting time. I'm actually spending time overthinking on how I'm overthinking. And then you don't really get out of the spiral. You're still in this hole and you're not going anywhere. So trust me, clarity comes with action, even if it means messy action, right? And whatever, fill in the blank, I'm not good enough. I am blank enough. I want you to remember that enough is a decision, not timing, not an amount. It is your decision. And that made a world of difference in my life. And not good enough. I think, you know, there's, there's two things that I find plagues most people. And that's limiting beliefs. We all have them in some way. 
And in some capacity, we all think that we're not enough in one area of our life. And really, if you think about it, well, if we were all perfect in every aspect of our life, then what was the point of our life journey? <laughs> we're here to have experiences and to learn and to grow. And you can only learn and grow if there's areas of your life that you need to improve and that you need to grow on. Yeah, so true. And so many people always think they, they're not reaching their goals. You know what? You're not having enough fun. You're not having fun in life. Like, okay, Lucy. Lucy and Lucy here both have <laughs> podcasts, right? We put out episode after episode. How is it that we're going to make sure it happens? Because we're having fun. We're having so much fun chatting with each other. We're having so much fun learning and feeding our brains, right? And we're having fun serving our audience and knowing that we provide value. If you just really tune in and really take away. Um, I had a guest on my podcast once and she, she went from homeless to seven figures. And she talked about when she was homeless, she took every free content like it was gold like it was gold and that helped her right this is a free content for you we put out so much free content because we genuinely wish that you can take away and implement it in your life today and take action towards living your best life we genuinely want that for you we really want you to live the best life possible and discover your passion and live your destiny and the epic life because you deserve it. You deserve it all. You deserve the luxury of getting help. You deserve the luxury of you know, just living life how you want to. And I think, you know, a lot of that comes down to you know, we, we started our lives somewhere along high school. This this list was uh, implanted in us that we had to tick these certain boxes. And as we tick each box, you know, happiness will come. And I think many of us have, you know, realized that the gig is up. We've ticked a lot of those boxes and the happiness level is not there. And that's because we're living somebody else's definition of what what life, what happiness, what success is. And I think the beauty comes when you realize that you get to explore, learn, and decide for yourself. And whether you're engaging in listening to different podcasts, or like you said, your your guest was looking for every resource possible and diving in, along the way, she must have realized some of those things worked for her and aligned with who she was, and some of them didn't. And that's all part of that exploration journey that we're on is finding those nuggets that work for you. And what doesn't, that's fine. It doesn't make you wrong or the other person wrong. It just didn't resonate for you. So you keep going, you keep learning, you keep growing. Yeah, it's so true. And again, happiness is a decision. It's a choice. It is. Yeah, it's a choice. And like you said, as you grow older, you just realize checking those check marks off has no correlation with happiness whatsoever. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Now, Lucy, you have a special gift for our listeners. Can you share a little bit about what that is? Yeah, I actually, I just love, love, love seeing others confidently reaching the next level. So what I have is um, a special gift. It's my ultimate secret to double your confidence in 30 seconds. So if you want to double your confidence in 30 seconds, just head over to www.confidentandepic.com to grab that resource. And for our listeners, you can also get your copy of Double Your Confidence in 30 Seconds by going to NectarGrowth.com. That's N-E-C-T-U-R-E-G-R-O-W-T-H.com. This is a private online community, and it is 
completely away from all forms of so social media. And by being part of this pod summit, you will receive the first 30 days free. But I know you're going to want to hang out longer because we have all sorts of resources in there. We're adding more every month. And we're also going to be hosting our monthly fireside chats there. And this is your chance to connect with women just like you, to share an authentic conversation. And yes, when we need to, we are going to vent. So make sure you join us at NectarGrowth.com. You can find links in the show notes and in your daily Pod Summit emails. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I look forward to connecting with you. And Lucy, Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your expertise. Thank you for having me, Lucy. And to all the beautiful listeners, blessings are coming. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Roller Coaster Podcast. Want to chat or share your ideas about today's show? Pop me an email at hello at the rollercoasterpodcast.com. Don't forget to connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at the Roller Coaster Podcast. Our theme song, Roller Coaster, was performed by the Lucky Setback. Audio editing by the one and only Jeff Quigley of Quigley Creative.